All right, so I'm outside of a Honda Accord. This is the 2020 Touring model. Uh, so I'm gonna start you at the front of the car and kind of go over a couple things. And while we're looking at the hood, I'll talk to you about the engine. So this is gonna be a two liter standard setup. So in previous years, it's only been offered in a 1.5 and a two liter. Now they've gone strictly to the two liter when you're looking at the Touring model. Uh, so 252 horsepower under the hood, 10 speed transmission, and a turboed engine setup. Uh, now it does have LED headlights. Uh, these are auto on off high beams. And then it does have the LED fog light controls too. It's got the classic chrome gill with the black underneath. I'll point out down below that you can actually see the radar right there and I'll go over what that is and how it works with the Honda sensing setup. And additionally, I'll show you up here, you can see that small um, hexagonal shape right there, or trapezoid I should say. That's gonna relate to something too I'll go over with Honda sensing when we hop in the car. So on the outside of the car, you can see it has a classic nice big wheel, so a 19 inch look uh, with a certain, fr uh, I'll say certain look to that wheel that's different from my other models. So if you're looking at like the model over there, or if you're looking uh, at a sport that also are, offers a 19 inch, but in a different pattern. Uh, this one's been tinted by the dealership that I'm here at. Uh, classically, it wouldn't come with that uh, tinted. Now, when we move around to the back of the car, I'll show you that you do have a dual chrome tipped exhaust setup. Uh, you do have the badging on the car, so you can see that. Uh, your backup camera is gonna be right here. And then of course your classic badge here. Now I grabbed the sticker out just so I can, I always like to show this in case there's something that I don't touch on while we're going over these. You can pause the video and you can always look through this as you want. So it makes life a little bit easier I know for everybody. So I just wanna do that so to make sure you can take care of that. Um, we'll go over all this stuff when we hop in the car. Down here you'll see your MSRP including your destination which is $930. Uh, MPGs on this car, you're looking at 22 in the city and 32 on the highway, so your combined right here is gonna be the 26. And um, then if you're a crash rating person, you five star overall crash ratings all the way down. So let's start you at the back of the car and show you a couple things here. So I'm gonna get the key out and we'll pop open the trunk and we'll go through a couple things. All right, so in the black, you got a classic 60-40 split going on there, so you can fold, fold them down and your controls are gonna be right here and right here. Now underneath, you do have a spare in this car. Unlike a lot of makes and models out there, a lot of them just have tire repair kits now. You do have a full diameter spare. So what that means is it's the full height, just not the full width. So bigger than a donut. You got your jack and your accessories. And then this funnel, I'm gonna explain here in just one second. So let's move over here to the door locks. Uh, or I should say the gas cap, because it's connected to the door lock. So if I unlock, I can press this and pop it open. So super cool that it's connected there. And then you'll notice it's capless. So I don't have to worry about leaving that untightened and setting off a check engine light anymore. This is gonna take care of that for you. But where that funnel comes into play that I was mentioning is, if I run out of gas and I need to fill up, I need something to be able to hold this open while I pour gas in, that's the purpose of that funnel. So that's what it is in case you ever run into that issue. Hopefully you don't run out of gas, but if you do, now you know what to do. So in the back seat, you do have heated seats in the back of the car. In the front, you are gonna have heated and ventilated, and I'll go over that. Your heat controls are right here on both doors, so I just wanna point that out for you. Uh, this one does have the black leather interior, and you can see the preparation uh, for my heat, uh, and then, of course, you know the leather setup because it is a touring model. Uh, you do have air vents in the back of this car, so both are right here. Now, I'll show you, because I was sitting in this car earlier, I'm six foot, so if I've got the seat pushed all the way almost back, this is the kind of leg room that I have sitting behind myself. So a comfy car. I could easily ride behind myself as a six footer in this vehicle for a long journey and be just fine. All right, so moving up to the front, the first thing I wanna show you is something related to key locks. It does have keyless entry. What that means is if I walk up, I can put my hand on the door handle, it'll automatically unlock. If I wanna lock it, there's three ridges right here. If I touch them, the doors have now locked. So I can walk away from the car. Same thing when I walk up and grab it. Now it's popped open, I'm ready to go. It's gonna be a, a keyless entry system and then a push button start when I hop in. It does have a remote start also. To use the remote start, let's just touch on that real quick. Always gotta make sure the doors are locked first and then you can press the lock uh, press the lock button and then press the remote start button and that'll fire up the car. It'll run for 10 minutes unless I press that same sequence again then it'll run for an additional 10. If I wanted to turn it off, I could press the unlock button and the remote start button and I could turn the car off. So maybe I got distracted and decided, oh, I'm not gonna leave work on time, let me turn it back off. So when we're looking in the car, I'll point out right here, you've got a 10-way powered seat. So as far as adjusting front, backwards, up under your legs and that sort of thing, your backrest and then your lower lumbar support is right here. Over on the door, I've got a lot of what I call normal new car stuff here. Your window controls auto up and down on your driver and passenger side, your window locks, door locks, and then your mirror controls. Down here, you can see that I do have a trunk release and then I do have a hood release. You'll notice there's not one for the gas or anything uh, because it is connected to the door locks. 
This car does have memory seating. It's really easy to set up. When you get in the car and crank it up, just press that. These will both start flashing and press and hold once you have it set. That's how you set the memory settings on the car. Now on the key, I will show you where it's at, but it's covered by this sticker. It'll say driver one or driver two back here. So you can connect all those things along with some of the additional settings inside of the vehicle. So let's get in the car and go through a couple things. So remote starts so just, or excuse me, push button starts. So throw a foot on the brake and press the start button and that'll fire it up for us. Uh, and then in, immediately this display will light up. So I've got a digital display right now. You can see it's giving me a warning that I have a door unlocked or a door open, I should say. So let's close that and go over some things. All right, so I'm gonna start you over here on the left side of the dash and point out some things. Parking brakes, or excuse me, parking sensors are standard on this car. While I'm, I'm mentioning that, let's talk about some other things that are gonna be standard in this car uh, that you wouldn't find on the model below it. So if you're kind of comparing you would get parking sensors in this vehicle. You would get a heads up display in this vehicle. You will get a uh, wireless charging setup in this vehicle. You will get ventilated seats in this vehicle. You will also get heated seats in the back of this vehicle. So those are some of those additions that you're gonna get by moving from the EXL up to the Touring. Uh, and then of course, this is a two liter engine. Um, so depending on which models below what you're looking at, you may be looking at the 1.5. So just something to keep in mind. Those are some of the extras that you're paying for along with uh, rain sensing windshield wipers, uh, LED headlights with auto on off high beams and things like that. Uh, so just so you have an idea for, hey, what am I paying for to move up this model? Those are some of those items. Uh, so this next button right here is related to Honda sensing. If I press that button, you'll get this display right here and it's gonna show three of my Honda, uh, Honda, I should say, sensing features. So the first one is road departure mitigation. This is currently on and what that is, is if I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and it'll start to shake the wheel to, to alert me. The next one down, my blind spot information system. So I'll show you what that is. In both mirrors, you're gonna have a, um, a little icon that'll light up. Anytime there's a car in either side uh, that's in your blind spot, that will light up. If you start to get over it, it will give you an audible alert in the car to let you know that there's somebody there. So that's how blind spot monitoring works and you can turn it on and off, of course. The next one is collision mitigation braking. So what that is, is a fancy way of saying, if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first it'll alert me and then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to prevent the accident. So. If you've caught maybe a Honda commercial lately in between a sporting event or something like that on TV, you've probably seen this because uh, they've been advertising how these features work. So not only does it work with cars, uh, but it also works with uh, pedestrians and anybody who might be on the road too. So just something to be aware of. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna scroll to the top of this menu up here and show you some different things. And how I got to that was just press the menu button and then scroll right here. So the first thing I wanna show you is the tachometer setup. If you just want a classic tack next to you know, a speedometer, you can have this set up right here. Um, but let's say you wanna mess around and look at some other things, you're taking a long trip, maybe you want your range. You know, How many miles do I have on this tank of gas, uh, average fuel consumption, that sort of thing. Uh, that's where you could find it right here. Uh, speed and time, same thing, it's gonna to relate to those two. Uh, audio wise, I like this because it will show whatever is going on. So if I throw the radio on here real quick, perfect. Now you can see the KVET uh, 98.1 uh, is what's playing on the radio right now. So it's just kind of nice and I like that it gives you a graphic and it's color and it's just, you know, it's a nice display. All right, below that phone, if I had my phone connected up Bluetooth, this is where I would have some options as far as making calls. It's just visually giving me some options too. I have a voice command button, which is right here. And while we're talking about that, to answer a call, to hang up a call, the voice command. The voice command button is also gonna work for some of my Apple CarPlay and Android Auto features if I wanna use that. Uh, there's actually a lot of voice command uh, features you can you can use for a lot of these vehicles, whether it be affecting things like the AC controls and different setups like that. So just be aware, uh, you might wanna look into that, throw a Google up there, or if you have a question about what command you can, let me know and I'll, I'll kinda get you a list and see what I can find for you. Uh, so the car is, uh, does come with built-in navigation uh, and, it, and it has a compass because of that. I get asked a lot about compasses in cars uh, because it, a lot of them have moved away from putting a compass just standard into the car, but typically if a Honda has navigation in it, it has a compass that you can access without pulling up the navigation. Uh, the navigation system is set up through Garmin. Uh, so pretty easy to use, you know, you can move around, you can pinch, you can pull, you can do all the normal stuff. Um, and then you can search obviously by voice command. So if you wanna use that same voice command button over here, um, or if you're at a standstill, you would be able to search uh, off the map here. So just something to be aware of, you know, if I'm in, if I'm moving, it's gonna force me to use the voice commands. Uh, while I'm here, I'll just show you, you can set up your home address. It's pretty easy. Uh, once you get the car, just add an address uh, and then hit enter. So most of this stuff's pretty intuitive and easy to work through. So I really do like that about this. Um, now, mind you, I use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto a lot, or well, I should say Android Auto because I, I am a Google user. Um, so. I like Google Maps and some of these other features, but it's nice to know that you have this and it's available to you because you have access to those two. Um, so just know that you have a lot of different setups that are available to you in this vehicle. All right, so moving off of navigation over here, I'll just move to traffic signs. I really like this feature. Um, what it uses is the camera up here that I mentioned earlier in this black box where you saw the trapezoid uh, cutout. It uses that to detect 
uh, any of the street signs that you pass. So that if you pass one that says 55, it's gonna alert you and throw that in that box right there. It's really nice if you're in a speed trap and you know it, or if you're in an area that you're just not familiar with and you're worried, or you go through a, um, a work zone, this is where this really comes into play because while navigation sometimes systems will tell you what the speed limit should be, they don't account for things like work zones. So it's a really helpful feature, I think, in this car in general. Uh, driver support, that'll pull up some of the features that we related to as far as uh, the Honda sensing stuff. So just be aware of that. Uh, and then driver attention, I, I won't touch on that too much, but if you're using all of these different safety features, you're not necessarily touching the gas and the brake and the, and the, and the steering wheel a whole, whole lot. Eventually it'll start to alert you just to make sure that you're alert and paying attention. Maintenance, this is gonna throw up your oil life and just let you know where you're at. When you get down to 15%, the car will give you an audible alert and it will give you a display alert. Um, from there, it'll throw a code at you, A1, A2, or B1, or B2, just letting you know. Um, you can Google that or you can look it up inside of your owner's manual and it'll tell you exactly what they're gonna recommend to you. Um, lastly, uh, your, your, your safety support we already touched on. That was the button that I pressed over here. So just two different ways to access the same info. Uh, and then below that is your warning. So this is like if I had a door open or the trunk was open or something of that nature. Um, so now we have a general understanding of that. You press the home button, it pulls up those, and then you scroll from here. Uh, your volume controls are here. Your back buttons here are always important. And then if I'm jumping between you know favorite stations or if I have music playing, I can jump to the next track right there. And then we talked about the voice command uh, controls there related to Bluetooth and of course uh, Apple CarPlay and whatnot. So on the right side of the steering wheel is going to be two more of the controls related to Honda Sensing um, and the heads up display which is going to be only available in this vehicle. Um, so when I'm pressing this uh, this button it's going to give me a couple different display options. I don't know that we're going to be able to see this. Actually yeah you can see it there. So you can see me toggling through some stuff out there on the screen. Uh, so it's just kind of nice that you have a lot of different options. Um, so depending on what you want to see it's nice to know that I can see if ACC and LKS is on. If I want my compass out in front of me um, you know, like a, a rev limit kind of thing. Or if I want that, what I mentioned earlier about the anytime I'm passing signs, it'll throw up the speed limit for me along with what speed I'm going. So, and then the heads up display is, of course, adjustable. I can, you know, raise it, lower it, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's where this button over here would come into play as far as raising it and lowering it to make it to where it fits into my field of vision. So that's heads up display. Now, the two features that I was mentioning, if you press the main button here, you're going to see ACC and LKS come on. So that's what's flashing at you because I'm pressing it. ACC stands for adaptive cruise control. Now what that is, is you have your classic cruise control where you set the speed and then you go down the road and somebody gets in front of you, you just have to drop off and cancel or, or lower the speed. This is gonna do all that for you. Uh, so you set the speed, it uses this camera and that radar that I showed you down in the front of the grill to detect cars in front of you and it'll keep spacing. Now you pick the spacing using this button right here. So when you press it, you're gonna see boxes appear. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between you and the car in front of you. So that's how adaptive cruise control works. Now if you're saying to yourself, hey, if I, what if I just wanna use classic cruise control? If you press and hold that same button, it'll jump over and say cruise mode selected. Now it's just a classic cruise. Same thing, turn it off or to turn it back on, press and hold, and we're back to ACC. Uh, LKAS stands for Lane Keep Assist. So what that is, is if I'm driving down the road and I start to veer to the left to the right out of my lane and I don't have my blinker on, this is gonna detect the lines on the road and keep me centered. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't use your blinker, you're probably not gonna care for this feature very much. But if you are, but you're easily distracted by your phone, your kids, your dog, your cat, your ferret, whatever it may be, um, this might be a feature that you wanna think about using. Um, because it, it is a safety feature and it's, it's designed to do just that, keep you safe. Uh, so how it works is, when I get going, I will press this button here and see some dotted lines appear up here. So when those fill in, it means it's now actively reading the road. And I, you can actually see them when I was doing it on the uh, heads-up display too, so it's kind of cool. Uh, that I can see them there too. Um, so I have to be going over 45 miles an hour for it to actively read the road. Uh, but once I'm going that, those will fill in solid. And if I start to drift to the left or the right, it'll actually correct for me and pull the steering wheel a little bit to the left or the right. It's not jarring, it's nothing abrasive. It's just there to help you out. And know that you can always turn this feature on and off. So easy enough. All right, so we have a general understanding of that. Uh, this car does have uh, your paddle shifters on here, so you can see a plus and a minus. Uh, so if I want to be able to affect the way the vehicle uh, shifts, I can absolutely control that, so giving you a little bit more control over the vehicle performance in the car. Related to performance, I will point out these two buttons down here. So the sport button, if I press that, immediately you'll know because everything will light up red, and it'll say sport down there in the center so you can see that's what it looks like. What this is gonna do is affect uh, the way the car revs, so it's gonna rev at a little bit higher RPM, give you a little bit more go, and affect the shifting points in the car. So if you're looking for a sportier or more performance-based drive, this would be a feature you would wanna turn on. Uh, if you were looking for the opposite, let's say I was looking for more of an eco-friendly drive, I could press the eco button, and when I do that, you'll see green come on around the car, and you'll see the green leaf down there in the center, uh, right there. 
Uh, and this is going to be the opposite. So it's going to affect some of the electrical systems in the front end of the car, um, allowing the car to get better gas mileage, but turning off things and limiting things. So it's going to limit your accelerator on how much get up and go you have off the line. It's going to also affect your AC unit uh, controls for how much output it will do. So related to heat or cold. So it's going to limit things to, to help increase that. So that is these two buttons right here. All right, so over here on the stock, I will just point out that you do have auto on off headlights, uh, of course, with the auto beam setup, and then your fog light controls are right here also. And then over on the other side, you have your windshield wiper controls right here. You just pull down to get them going. All right, so over here on the touchscreen, uh, the first thing I wanna do is show you your backup camera. So if I throw it in reverse, I'll pull this up so we can check out a couple things. So you've got three different views. Uh, you got a wide angle view, you've got your classic backup camera, and then one aim straight down. So if I'm backing up to another car, garage, a bush, anything like that, I can see exactly how close I'm getting. Uh, and then of course, I've got my cross traffic monitoring right here. So there's sensors off the back of the car. Uh, and this is gonna alert me if anybody's coming from my left or right, uh, so that I'll know when I'm backing up. It'll give me a big arrow on the screen and an audible alert to, to let me know that, hey, there's somebody coming. So if you're parked in between two big cars and you can't see, this is there to help you. Uh, so just so you have an idea for what's going on. And then this display is what I just pulled up, and this is gonna be related to your parking sensors. Um, so when you're backing up or you're going forward, uh, you can see those will light up and let you know. So I'm actually near a car. I might be able to get one to go off. I don't wanna to get too close to a car, obviously. Oh, I might wanna make sure they're on too, yeah. So I won't get too close, but you can see how it works. Uh, obviously, I don't wanna play, play with the devil and risk getting a new car into a new car. So that is your backup camera. All right, so related to the touchscreen, let's talk about some things. You've got buttons down the sides here and a volume knob. So I know a volume knob was a big point of contention over the last few years as far as complaints if it didn't have one. And then on the other side, same thing, you have some buttons here too. So it's nice to be able to reach over and just feel for a button versus having to look at a screen and touch a specific spot on it. Um, so let's jump out to the home button. Navigation, we already talked about. Phone, if you want to connect with your phone to Bluetooth, pretty easy to do. Um, you can press the phone button if you've never connected one and connect from there. But let's say you've already connected your phone and you want to connect up your wife, your spouse, your friend, your brother, your dogs, whoever's phone it is. Go to settings and then go to connections because we want to add a connection. And then from here, we want to go to Bluetooth. Uh, and then we wanna go to the device list, or excuse me, you can skip that now. Uh, so one last step to worry about, you go straight to connect new device, and then it'll start the prompt, just make sure your Bluetooth is turned on. So that's how you do that. Uh, if you need to, stop, rewind, and you can watch it in case you bought the car and you need a little bit extra help. Uh, now, FM, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. It does have HD radio stations, which I will point out, uh, which is pretty cool. I just like to know that I have them. Um, you can see, to set a preset, it's as easy as that. If I have a station pulled up, press and hold. Now that's my station. Um, so just so you understand how that works. Uh, and then my HD stations, I can jump over here and look and see what they are if I wanna jump between uh, different stations. That's how I do it. Um, so it's kinda nice. You can see that those two stations, uh, AM 1300, the zone there, and KVET, they're actually both owned by the same company. I previously worked for them, so. All right, moving away from that, Bluetooth audio, if you wanna stream audio, uh, whether it be off of a device, a phone, whatever it may be, you have that option available to you. You just have to connect up to Bluetooth, and you already saw how to do that. Go to settings, Bluetooth, and so forth. Smartphone connection. So this is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So the first thing I would need to do, plug my phone in to the USB. There's a USB right here you can plug your phone into. If you're an Apple-based user, you do that. This is gonna light up, say Apple CarPlay, you go from there. Select it, the screen lights up, it mirrors a lot what your phone looks like, and this is gonna be very easy to use. So if you want access to your uh, navigation system, your maps, your messages, your music, um, you know, Spotify, Pandora, iHeart, uh, Radio, um, there's a lot of different apps you have available to you. Uh, it's forever changing just because as things move in and times progress. Um, so great functions and features available to you on this. I really, really like them. If you're an Android-based user, I will tell you that you do need to download the Android Auto app before you do this, so just be aware of that. Uh, other than that, though, that's how that function works. Trip Computer, I think that's pretty self-explanatory as to how that works. You saw that same info. Uh, I had it pulled up earlier on the other side, so if I want that same info, I can get it here or I can get it here. So just to have an understanding of that. SMS text function, we'll just read text aloud to you. Sirius Satellite Radio comes with 90 days. USBs is pretty self-explanatory. I can plug something in and be able to listen to music off it. Thumb drives work. Uh, you know, you just have to might mess with the formatting a little bit. For the most part, they'll pick up pretty much anything, but be aware that occasionally if you get some funky formatting, you might need to look at that. Um, this card does come with a, a hot spot. Uh, they give you three months for free, and then afterwards, I believe it's like eight bucks. I can't remember if they tell you when you select on here. Uh, or not, but this is something that's available in this vehicle that would not be available in the models below. So I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but something to be aware of. It does come with that trial, as I mentioned, you just press the button to turn it on and then it'll go from there. You can see dealer demo right now. All right, so moving away from that, your clock, I don't think I need to explain. NFC manager, if, if you're not familiar with NFC, you'll see this logo right here. It, you have to have it enabled on your phone, but it just allows you to tap your phone to it and it connects up via Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So a pretty cool feature. 
Uh, Honda Link, in this specific car, you're actually going to have some options uh, as far as being able, and some of these are subscription based, but they do give you free trials on being able to start the car from your phone, uh, being able to unlock and lock the doors. Uh, and then there's one safety feature that's on every single Honda uh, that isn't subscription based. It's just there. And what that is, is if the airbags deploy the car, uh, they can first call you to see if you're okay. And if you don't answer, they can call 911 for you. So it's 100% free. Uh, whenever you connect to a phone, it'll prompt you with that as a question. Uh, would you like to enable Honda Link? And then it'll give you a description of what it's, it's saying. So be aware of that. Turn it on. It's really a great safety feature. If you're wondering, uh, depending on the trim levels, what you can get, if you go to hondalink.com, it will allow you to pick any trim level of any Honda and look and see what's available to you. So just something to be aware of. This is the very top end model, uh, so it's going to have everything available to it. Now, you saw that I had a couple of different uh, menus here that I'm scrolling through, and you're saying to yourself, man, that's a lot to have to mess with. What if I just want a couple of them and I want them right by myself? If you just press and hold on something, it'll pull up the screen. And then I can start moving stuff around. Uh, I can add, I can hide different features and functions. So it's just kind of nice to know that you can do that. Um, so that way, if you want to make it real simple and just have a couple buttons, or if you just want to move buttons over to where you have the three or four that you use, once you get a set up how you want, just hit done. So very easy to use this. It's very intuitive. Uh, and then across the top, I didn't point this out earlier, but you have these like quick picks. So like whether I want to jump to a phone, whether I want to jump to navigation, FM, those kind of things. And you can pick what goes up there too. Uh, so know that you can customize all of this. Flashers are right here. You can see that my airbag's not on. That's what that is in case you have this car and you're concerned. It just means that there's not enough weight in the seat to, to turn it on. Your AC controls right here. Uh, your heated seats and your ventilated seats. So this car does have ventilated seats in the front of the vehicle, heated seats in the front and the back. Uh, and then a dual climate control. I won't explain that too much. I think for the most part, everybody understands how that works. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you do have a wireless charging station in here. Uh, so just slide your phone down in there uh, and it will get to work for you. I think for the most part, I've tried it with a couple different cases and had pretty good luck. But if you have some big serious OtterBox or something steel or something like that, uh, be aware that it might create an issue. So just, you know, you might have to try it out. I always say if you're at the dealership, just throw your phone down in there and see, make sure. Um, now, your controls right here. A lot of people struggle with this at first just because it's odd and they're not used to it. All it is is just buttons. So you, you pull to hit reverse, you know what I mean? Your backup camera shows up neutral, drive, and so forth. So they're easy to understand and they light up. It's just not a shifter here. So just a little bit different. And now, throw it back in park here real quick and show you a couple features down here. Your parking brake is awesome. It's electronic, so just makes setting it a little bit easier. All you've got to do is make sure you have your foot on the brake and then pull up on that trigger and it sets the parking brake. You've got the LED right here and then it'll actually say brake down there to allow you to, to know that. Press down to release it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, brake hold. So how brake hold works is if I'm in drive and I turn the brake hold button on, so I'm going to hit that button, you're going to see some stuff appear here. First, it's going to say brake hold and then the hold button is on. So what that means is I can let my foot off the brake, which I have just done while the car is in drive and we're not moving. So I move my six feet forward because we're in, you know, stop and go traffic and we come to a stop and then you're going to notice the hold button came back on. Now it is holding the brake for me. Uh, I don't have my foot on it and the car is in drive. Uh, so this is great for stop and go traffic or, you know, you can come up with the scenario, but that's what brake hold is and that's how it works. Just keep in mind, you do have to have your seatbelt on. If I take my seatbelt off, I'll show you what will happen. So I take my seatbelt off. It's immediately going to throw the parking brake on. Alert me here and you're going to hear an audible alert because the car is still in drive letting me know, hey, you need to shift out of that. But it's going to prevent me from accidentally rolling into the car in front of me when it disengages. So that's how this feature works. All right, so in here you can see I have a nice center console, nice and big. I've got a change cup, got another USB and a power outlet in there, and then I have the USB and power outlet in here additionally too. Uh, my leather interior up front, same thing, perforated. This is uh, black leather. It's a silver exterior, or I think it's lunar silver, and then, you know, black leather interior. I don't think it has a fancy name. Uh, I do have a nice auto-dimming mirror uh, with home link, so I can set up that for my great gate clicker, garage clicker, you know, whatever those may be. Um, Honda Link, as far as reaching out, uh, and then my assistance. This car does come um, with like, it's, it's essentially kind of like an OnStar setup. Uh, so just 